The other um, way in which I, I, I do agree with my fellow panelists that, uh, that political correctness has done uh, uh, an enormous amount of harm in, in the sliver of the population that might be, I don't, wouldn't want to say persuadable, but certainly uh, whose affiliation might be up for grabs, comes from the uh, uh, often highly uh, literate, highly intelligent people who uh, gravitate to the alt-right, uh, internet savvy, uh, media savvy, who um, uh, often are um, radicalized in that way, who, who swallow the red pill, as the saying goes, the illusion from, from, from the matrix, when they are exposed to the first time to true statements that have never been voiced in college campuses or in the New York Times or in respectable media, uh, that are almost like a bacillus to which they have no uh, immunity. And they are immediately infected with both a feeling of outrage that these truths uh, are unsayable uh, and no defense against uh, uh, taking them to what we might consider to be rather repellent conclusions. And let me give you some examples. Um, so here is a, um, a fact that's going to sound you know, ragingly controversial, but is not. And that is that um, capitalist societies are better than communist ones. Okay? So if you, if you doubt it, then just uh, ask yourself the question, would I rather live in South Korea or North Korea? Uh, would I rather live in West Germany in the 1970s or East Germany or in the 1960s? So th this is not, uh, I, I submit that this is actually not a controversial statement, but in university campuses, it is considered, be considered flamingly radical. Number two, uh, here's another one. Men and women are, uh, are, are not identical in their life priorities, in their sexuality, uh, in, their, uh, in their tastes and interests. Again, this is not controversial to anyone who is even glanced at the data. The kind of vocational interest tests of the kind that your high school guidance counselor gave you have been given to millions of people. And men and women give different answers as to what they want to do for a living and how much time they want to allocate to family versus uh, career and so on. But you kind of you can't say it. I mean, someone, a very famous person on this campus did say it. And uh, we all know what happened to him. And he's no longer, well, he is on this campus, but no longer in the same office. Uh, here's a, uh, a, a third fact that is just not controversial, although it sounds controversial, and that is that different ethnic groups commit uh, violent crimes at different rates. You can go to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, look it up on their website. The uh, homicide rate among African Americans is about seven or eight times higher than it is among European Americans. And uh, terrorism, go to the Global Terrorist Database and you find that uh, worldwide the overwhelming majority of suicide terrorist acts are, are committed by Islamist uh, extremist groups. Now, if you've never heard these facts before, uh, and you stumble across them, or someone mentions them, it is possible to, uh, uh, to, to come to some extreme conclusions, such as that, uh, that women are inferior, that African Americans are naturally violent, that we all ought to be anarcho-capitalists and, uh, and uh, do away with all regulation and social safety nets, um, that, uh, that most terrorism in this country is the fault of, of Muslims. Uh, now, these are unwarranted conclusions because for each one of these facts, there, is a, there are very powerful counterarguments for why they don't license racism and sexism and anarcho-capitalism and so on. <laughs> the fact that men and women aren't identical uh, does not, has no implications for whether we should discriminate against women for a number of reasons. One of them is for any traits in which the sexes differ, the two distributions have enormous amounts of overlap so that you can't uh, draw a reliable conclusion about any individual from group averages. Uh, number two, the uh, principle of uh, opposition to racism and sexism is not an, uh, a factual claim that the sexes and races are indistinguishable in every uh, aspect. It's a political and moral commitment to treat people as individuals as opposed to prejudging them by the statistics of, of their group. Third, we know that some of the statistical generalizations about races and sexes change over time. So what is true now may not necessarily be true in uh, 10 or 20 years. So these are all reasons why you can believe that the sexes are different and be a uh, very strong feminist. Uh, why you can believe that 
differences uh, between the, uh, the, the uh, races exist and be very strongly opposed to any form of racism. In the case of, say, rates of violent crime, it used to be, uh, go back uh, 100 years, um, the rate of uh, violent crime among Irish Americans was far uh, higher than among other ethnic groups. That obviously changed. There's no reason that that can't change in the case of, of uh, current racial differences. Uh, in the case of terrorism, the majority of domestic terrorism is committed by right-wing extremist groups, not by uh, Islamic groups within, within this country. And of course, through much of its history, Islam was far more uh, enlightened than Christendom. There was no uh, equivalent of the Inquisition. There was no equivalent of the wars of religion uh, in, in the uh, classical history of, of uh, Islam. And finally, in the case of uh, the fact that capitalist, capitalism is really a better system than, uh, than Marxism, every successful capitalist society has regulation, um, has a social safety net. And in fact, some of the countries with the strongest social safety nets uh, are also the countries that are most friendly, that are most market friendly, that have the greatest degree of economic freedom. So these are all reasons why you can believe all of these and not necessarily drift toward uh, extremist positions. In fact, why you can be a progressive, a centrist, a liberal, even a leftist, and believe all of these, because you're exposed not only to the facts, but how to put them in context. Now, let's say that you have never even heard anyone mention these facts. The first time you hear them, you're apt to say, number one, the truth has been uh, withheld from me by universities, by mainstream media. Uh, number, uh, and moreover, you will be vindicated when people who voice these truths are suppressed, shouted down, uh, assaulted, all the more reason to believe that the that, that the left, that the mainstream media, that universities can't handle the truth. Uh, so they get vindicated over and over again. But worst of all, you're never exposed to the ways of putting these facts into context so that they don't lead to racism and sexism and, uh, and uh, extreme forms of uh, anarcho-libertarianism. So the uh, politically correct left is doing itself an enormous disservice when it renders certain topics undiscussable, especially when the, uh, the facts are clearly behind them, because they leave people defenseless the first time they hear them uh, against the most uh, extreme and uh, indefensible conclusions possible. If they were uh, exposed, then the rationale for putting them into uh, proper political and moral context could also be uh, articulated, and I don't think uh, you would have uh, quite the extreme backlash. Thank you very much, Stephen.